Ladies and gentlemen, I do not claim to have created hip hop. I didn't create the word. I created the tools that makes hip hop possible. Let me explain. I had to figure out a way to make it continuous without you having to do any readjustment with your feet or your hiney. I had to figure this out. <laughs> so if I was going from a white, a, a white drummer to a black drummer, to a foreign drummer, to an American drummer, to a pop drummer, rock, jazz, blues, funk, disco, R&B, one behind another, I had to figure out a way to make all these sounds hold hands, which had nothing to do with sonics, math. And the answer is simple. Libraries are evolved. <laughs> and we have to evolve with the world. This world is very different now than it was even five years ago. And if you're talking about DVDs, we got streaming now in our pockets. If you're talking about uh, reference materials, we got Google in your pockets. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but we are still here to educate and in order, in order to get you guys through these doors and let you know how relevant reference still is, how relevant reading still is, how relevant knowledge and wisdom and inspiration still is. We bring you here, attracted by the names that we have to offer and teach through experience. My name is Carl Shaw. I'm the manager of community engagement and programs here at the Wilmington Public Library. And myself and the director, I, I, I will be remiss not to. Look, like he's trying to hide behind. He's trying to hide behind the bar. I'm Mr. J Jamal Ron. Come on out, Jamal. You know, never really heard of the Women's Public Library, never been in this building before. But a couple of years ago, um, Jamar started as the director here. And he came to me, I was working in the Workforce Development Department. And he said, you know, um, I got a few ideas. I kind of want to bounce off you. And I heard that you are the guy who can help me make this happen. And ever since then, it's been history after history. Last year, we won the highest National Award for Libraries and Museums. We were the keynote speakers for the uh, Newcastle County Entrepreneurship, uh, Entrepreneurship Summit. So it's just been accolade. We were even voted one of the most beautiful buildings in the, in the nation, the most beautiful libraries in the nation. For the moment, you've all been waiting for. I mean, this brother, I could tell a little bit about how I felt. You know, I saw him first on the movie Wild Style. <laughs> and, I mean, and I mean, like, how this art form is like worldwide now. Trillions and trillions of dollars, you know, uh, generated from this culture. Started in Little Old Bronx, New York. Yeah. This gentleman is an intricate part of this. So we all know this, point number one, he is one of the inventors of hip hop music. Number two, he is the first hip hop artist to be inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He is also one of the first hip hop artists to win a Grammy Award. He is the first, not a first hit, the first DJ to turn a turntable into an instrument. Mm -hmm. And most recently, he received a doctorate, y'all. A doctorate. 
from Buffalo State University. So he is now called Dr. Joseph Sadler. <laughs> so we all know him as Grand Master Flash. Give him a warm
I would be sent to bed early. I would get up early. I would hear the clink of his tools. I would hear the door slam. I would wait. I would go in the kitchen and get a chair. And I would bring it over to the closet. I mean, after a while he just, like my, my honey was on fire weekly. That he was just tearing me out of the frame. And this is the thing that was probably the most hurt inside the black tunnels. From this point on, there was a serious marriage between me and Vinyl. As I got older, I started to just look at electrical things in the house. How is it that my bigger sisters could turn on something and it don't do something? So after a while, I was unscrewing the back of everything in the house from the, my sister's hair dryer to the stereo in the house to the washing machine to everything. I became public and meet number one in the house and mom said you have to stop doing this. I'm going to send you, I'm going to send you somewhere where you can learn what you are doing. And she sent me to Samuel Gompers Vocational and Technical High School in the Bronx, 149th Street, Southern Boulevard. From that point on, I got to learn about Westinghouse, Edison, Tesla, Banneker, Von Braun. Now when I'm unscrewing the back of something, I understand what it is. There's resistors, capacitors, transformers. There's two types of voltages, DC, AC. AM, FM is amp, amplitude mo modulation and frequency modulation. I'm starting to understand what Ohm's law is in the theory. The last project that we made at Samuel Gompers was to build an amplifier. I built a little cheap amplifier, but I understood solid state versus vacuum tubes. I was able to break down the resistor color code. What was the capacitor? What was the diode? How do the push-pull circuits, how does it go from DC to AC? Once I figured that out, I went back to vinyl. Fell in love with the turntable, fell in love with the vinyl. But ladies and gentlemen, for some reason, Songs made me very, very angry, and I'll explain. I wasn't really happy with the way songs was made. So, I started listening to the radio as a youngster, and there was these mix shows that would come on with DJs that blended. But the thing about it was, I couldn't tell where the song started and ended to the next song. I found that to be very intriguing. And then I was asked to go see a street DJ. And when I seen this particular gentleman, for the life of me, I was wondering, why is one song crashing into this other, this one crashes into this other, and why does that sound like that? It made me very, very angry. <laughs> I said, maybe it was just a bad night. I'll come see you another time. <laughs> four bars forward is six counterclockwise revolutions full loop. Let me explain, guys and girls. If I listen to a song sonically, meaning how the way it sounds, when I put the headphones on, I can hear it a certain way. If I pass the headphones to you, you'll hear it a certain way. If I pass the headphones to you, you'll hear it a certain way. So I said I cannot listen to music in that manner. I use math. And the best part of the record for me was the drum solo part. And this is the part that made me most angry. It's a song of you playing, and then back to the whack part. I'm like, no. 
Why is this? Why are songs being made like this? So, my best friend Easy Mike used to come to my house and knock on the door. Miss Sadler, could Joe come outside and play? <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I was trying to come outside and play for three years, but I was just too busy being angry on why music is made the way it was being made. Four bars forward, six counterclockwise revolutions equals full loop. The house of hip hop in its order. Graffiti, DJ, breaker. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not claim to have created hip hop. I didn't create the word. I created the tools that makes hip hop possible. Let me explain. My contribution is a unification of these two elements. The quick mix theory lives on this. It was a service of the breaker and the rapper. I had to figure out a way to make it continuous without you having to do any readjustment with your feet or your hiney. I had to figure this out. <laughs> so if I was going from a, right, a, a white drummer to a black drummer, to a foreign drummer, to an American drummer, to a pop drummer, rock, jazz, blues, funk, disco, R&B, one behind another, I had to figure out a way to make all these sounds hold hands, which had nothing to do with sonics, math. Because the sound of a drummer on an Italian break will be different from a, the drum break on an American break. So I'm not listening for the bass and all that there. I'm listening for the four bars that I need to go in a forward motion. So I came up with this thing called the quick mix theory. A lot of the songs that I played back then a lot of the great bank breaks, they were white bands, but these were some bad mother. Yeah. Oh, sure, man. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> what I'm gonna do here in the digital age, I'm gonna play a few samples from songs because what you gotta understand is most people say words and music when you're writing a song, and hip hop is music and words because the rapper cannot rap to nothing. I mean, some could. I like Jay Z rapping, I can tell he's dope, you know, but not everybody can do that. So, for me, I'm going to demonstrate just some songs that became staples for hip hop. Every music connoisseur, every lover of vinyl, and DJs at that time were extremely angry at me because I was putting my fingers all over the record. <laughs> like they used to treat records like children. 
with the velvet brush and he would wipe it very carefully and slip it inside the white paper and then put it into the jacket. I mean, I took two, I take two copies and shove that motherfucker inside there onto the next <laughs> Everybody in the world was mad at me. Who the hell am I to put crayons on the record? That was blasphemy. How dare you do that? But I tried doing it by picking the arm up and putting it back down. And this is the way it works. A male star, you can identify. If you pick the if you pick the vinyl up and drop it back down, the chances of you being in the exact same place is slim to almost nothing. You probably won't be there. So I had to come up with this theory. I know which one he got off of this one. 
Yep. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to explain to you the early, early, early science of hip hop. I'm gonna say this again. I didn't invent the word. I didn't say I invented the hip hop. I'm saying that I came up with the tools that allows hip hop to be here. The elongating of the bed of a particular area so that the rapper could speak is my contribution to the culture. Say it again. The elongating of a section of music was made so the rapper can have a beat to speak on. Mm. I say this in a godly fashion, what if I didn't do this? What would the rapper have to speak on? No studios, mm -hmm. no computers. Mm. Just this. So what I'm gonna do here is, let grab that vein. Got it? So you're seeing the digital side of things, but what I really wanna do is I wanna break down the quick mix theory to you. So, fame, lose the laptop, let's go vinyl. Hey. Whoa! Yeah. Taking the gloves off. <laughs> and I say this, there are very few people that I love that do this thing in a mean, 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 mean way. How you doing, Mel Star? <laughs> See, this thing, this DJing and quick mix theory way of DJing is like driving. You have to know where you're going, you have to know when to pump the brakes. Otherwise, you will sound like that guy that was back in the days doing what I call train wrecks, one beat smashing into the other, and you have to find yourself around. It's very annoying. I've been told by some guys that they found their wives at my party. <laughs> so if I can keep the beat going and she don't leave, leave the floor to go to the bar for a drink, I can get the phone number, get the pictures, get the yards, and everything is all good! <laughs> so now I'm gonna give you a, a basic formula of how I came up with this. I'm gonna explain this again, guys. I'm gonna explain this again. Four bars forward, meaning, let's just take good times, because I wanna make sure you understand what I'm saying when I say four bars forward, so let's take good times. Good times, one, mm, mm, two, mm, 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 three, Four bars. The average song that's listened to by the brain, four bars is recognized. Statistically, statistically speaking. So what I did was, I came up with this quick mix theory as the standard to keeping the beat on time. I'm going to let the thing play four bars, and then I'm going to spin it backwards six times. And I'm going to re-arrive at the top of the break. So let's take this song right here. I'm gonna do it before I cut it up. I'm going to count the bars. One, two, three, four. Now, this is where I was 
getting ready to say, F this, this thing is not working right for me because I would say to myself, to myself mathematically, four bars forward should mean I should be able to spin the record back four bars and re-arise at the top of the break. But it was wrong. Hmm. And the reason why it was, and it perplexed me for almost two months in my three years of studying. Hmm. It was four bars forward. Why can't it be four bars going back? Exactly. And it took me two months to understand that the average LP speed is 33 and, and one third. third. Yes. And I was getting ready to say, F this, I'm not doing this anymore because it's not coming out the way that I want it. And once the Eureka moment arrived, mm -hmm. I tried it with a jazz break, with a funk break, with a disco break, with a rock break. They all came back six. Six counterclockwise. I want you to follow me. This line here is called the intersect, is what I called it. I was hated for putting my markings on the record. <laughs> I remember trying to find a job, and some of my friends were like DJs at the club. Right. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get on, man, because they said you'd be putting your fingers on a record. You know, man, we just, we just got high another day together. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> 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 so here we go. Remember, I'm gonna let four bars go by, forward, throw it, six. We arrive at the top of the break. Let me go. <laughs> ah, <hell now. laughs> One, two. And I tell you, this was a very lonely time for me to have to figure this whole thing out. Mike stopped knocking on the door, asking if I'm going to come outside to play, go to basketball, chill with the chicks, nine yards, just that, that, that. I never made it out. 
But on that third year, Easy Mike spent the night at my house, and it was about three o'clock in the morning, and I kicked him and I said, get out of the bed, I need to show you something. And Easy Mike said to me, so is this the reason why you wasn't coming outside to play? I said, yes, this is what he wants. I didn't want to be angry anymore. I didn't want to listen to train wreck DJs anymore. And I wanted to be able to do what I call, matter of fact, I'm gonna use an analogy. In grade school, when we were going on a trip, we would get to the corner before we cross the street. There'd be a teacher in the front, and there'd be a teacher in the back. And one of the teachers would say, everybody hold hands, whoever you're with, and we will all cross the street together. My analogy was this. If it was a white drummer, a black drummer, a pop drummer, rock, jazz, blues, funk, if I can make all these beats hold hands mm -hmm. and make this one song, somebody might like this. Yes. Now, there's an exception to the rule when the beat is two bars. So when the beat is two bars, when the beat is two bars, that means my intersector has to be brought back three times so that I can re-arrive at the top of the break. Now when I got this record, this probably was the most strangest album covers that I ever had, but I had to say to myself, like, Flash, don't, don't, remember, you could be tricked. This could be something really something here, really good. And the album was by this new group, and it was, the album was called Toys in the Attic. Like, who the hell puts their toys in the attic like, for one reason? <laughs> And it sound like this. <coughs> Remember, this beat is only two bars, not four. So that means it's three counterclockwise for me to re-arrive at the top of the break. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I gotta say to you, hip hop is about to become 50 years old. Still here! Um, mom's not here, dad's not here, but I... I kind of owe this all to them because Dad wasn't tearing me out the frame for touching it. He told me the value of this is like, like kept tearing me out the frame. And Mom was the same shit. She taught me the importance of the needle. So when I came on the scene doing this, 
Every DJ that was playing the way that it was playing, they had to not play that way anymore. I didn't mean to hurt any feelings. I didn't mean to disrespect anybody. You know, my sound system was absolutely disgusting. Um, with the help of my training from San Diego office, I had two little cheap loose speakers and I used to play on 927 Fox Street. And it was no bass on the sound system. It was all treble. But it was how we, we grew up. And um, with hip hop being 50, I'm saying to myself, you know, a lot of time people, when they call me, they call me a legend. And I, I gotta tell you that scares me. And I, let me tell you why, because a lot of times when you're a legend or an inventor or something, you don't get the chance to see what you did come into full fruition. It's, I appreciate it when people call me it, but it makes me very, very afraid. And all I can say is this, when I invented this, the world could have said, hell no. Instead, they said, what is this? And then, it went from little business in the Bronx to the producers and record companies coming in saying, what is this thing that I was doing? And then there were machines built, like samplers. So now, when the computer is hooked up to the sampler, what I do manually, now a computer could take a small passage of music and make it continuous. And this is where we get big business. Hip hop goes from the small organic thing in the Bronx to every household on planet Earth. And you know, when I think about it, it almost scares me because this could have possibly not have happened. There are those who invent things, and the world says, no, we don't like that. And it's like I took my life to do this. And I've been doing this for 49 years. Mm. And, uh, and I sometimes I just shed a tear and I say, wow. So if I'm in Japan and I, I see the DJ holding it steady, and I go to Australia and I see the DJ holding it steady, and I go to London and I see the DJ holding it steady, and I go around the world and the, all the DJs is holding it steady, and I hear these incredible rap records now. And I'm saying to myself, I hear a sample in it. I, I thank God that I'm here and I gotta say this to you guys, without y'all, there is no me. It just doesn't happen. And I'm thankful to have seen the world over 200 times. I am thankful that I come from a place in a time when it was nothing. I come from a place where I couldn't afford to buy equipment, so there was a junkyard behind the projects, the Bronze Neck Project, and that's where I got my pieces from. And I had to jury rig and put it together by hand. I figure if you love something, if you truly love something, it should take care of you for the rest of your life. Thank you. My name is Grand Master. <laughs> Because you were mixing so many different genres of music, which I really appreciate. Who did you go to, to like, you know, come in contact with that kind of music? Because in the projects, I, I know for me, before headphones, it was like you had to listen to a real quiet because people would clown you in a second. In my 
household, in the Sandlot household, dad was listening to Glenn Miller, mom was listening to Lino Horn, Violet was listening to disco, dad, uh, Kometa was listening to uh, funk, Penny was listening to Latin. Like I was very, very fortunate, depending on who was on the stereo that day, that I learned that music should not be in categories and it shouldn't be on charts. I don't understand why they do that. And that's why I was turned off with the sonics of music. Mm. And I went to math. And I says, he has 25 drum beats back to back. DJs, take your choice. Follow me. Make it your own. Like dudes like him, they'll start. <laughs> DJ. Yes, my family was pretty much. Thank you. Anybody? Yeah. So I had a really good time and learned a lot at the Wilmington, Delaware Public Library. Grandmaster Flash, one of the people I looked up to as I was coming up, I actually got a chance to meet him in the studio back in the 90s in Philly on 52nd Street. It was really good to hear how he helped pioneer the music and the culture and the things that he went through. Also finding out that he was one of the first hip hop artists in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and also one of the first hip hop artists to get a Grammy. Amazing person, very humble, great experience. And the, the Wilmington, Delaware Public Library has had so many great speakers and entertainment people. Slick Rick, Felicia Rashad from The Cosby Show, Tommy Davidson, Judge Joe Brown, Pam Greer, Dolly Parton, and LeVar Burton. So they always are doing something at that library, changing the face of library. Not just saying, shh. <laughs> so until next adventure, remember, take care of each other, peace out, and I'll see you all soon.